Here we're going to attempt to use eCognition to, with a small subset of Worldview 2 data to identify tree crowns for the, purposes, for the purpose of mapping vegetation density. So I've already pulled up my small subset of Worldview 2 data with a standard RGB colour composite on the left hand side here. And as you can see in the process tree, I have the tree crown delineation rule set that I've already loaded here. So what I'd like to do is step through this bit by bit and have a look at some of the processes within the rule set and how it actually creates the tree crown delineation model. So first of all, what we do as, as with most of these projects is we create the segmentation. So if we look here at, at, the, at the segmentation options, uh, we've got various scale scale factors with the scale factor with the shape and compactness and you can also see which image layers have been used in creating that segmentation so if I pull that down here you'll see that any of the the layers with a weight of zero mean that they're not included in the segmentation statistics and those with a value of one have been included so you can also see what I've got is some of some of these steps have got specific comments attached to them. So for that particular one, as you, as you click on that particular step of segmentation, it's, it suggests that you use the red band for vegetation um, versus the background contrast and the pan band for defining the edges of, of the different features. So that's how we step through the segmentation there. And if we run that by itself, We'll just get that running. So you'll see that the segmentation is now complete and it's taken just over 16 seconds to create that. And it's actually really difficult to see individual objects because there's, there's such a high density of them. So we won't actually see them until we zoom all the way in and you can see the fine level of creation of those individual objects to start with. The next step of the process basically looks for areas where there's a where there's a maxima in in what's known as the forest density index so that's click that's on the that's on the next step here so the forest density index we've we've added in if you look in the feature view we've added added it here as a as a customized variable so i can look up exactly how that's created so if we go to edit that what we can see is is it's it's just a simple calculation using the near infrared red edge and the coastal bands and the the mean values of each of those and creating an algorithm to to basically find where the where the local maxima are to try and figure out what is most likely to be the i guess the the height of an the the maximum reflectance of an individual tree which should give us an indication of the center of the tree crown there. So that's based on based on a an article that was published in the in Remote Sensing of Environment um, by Bunting and Lucas in 2006 and the article is called The Delineation of Tree Crowns in Australian Mixed Species Forests using hyperspectral compact airborne spectrographic imager or CASI data. So that's what we've used there to find the initial tree crowns. So if we, if we come back now to our process tree and rule set, we can um, run, that, run, that, run that part of the process and see, see what it begins to, to form out. So if you have a look, if we bring this back out to the full full scene here. This, this gives us an indication of where some areas might be tree crowns. Some of them are going to be um, and are going to be incorrect and we'll, we'll account for that later. So the next next step of the process actually goes through and looks at these these areas which are, have been indicated that they may be tree crowns and essentially grows those the individual objects grows out a little bit so it looks at the spectral values of the of the objects surrounding these initially identified objects and and loops around to make the initial tree crown somewhat larger so if you look at the size of the identified objects 
here where we've got the the red the red objects here have been initially targeted what we'll do at the next stage is grow those a little bit larger and see what what comes out of that so we'll execute that so the seed growing is completed now and as you can see these these objects are considerably larger than they were in the initial stage so what we've got here are these these red objects which have been classified at this stage as as or being identified as being tree crowns and the black objects are not so we can have a look at that if we turn off the lines for example you can see how those pixels um, have come in and you can see that there's still a lot of these a lot of really small objects that we'll probably need to clean up at the next stage so if we look at how we're going so far if we if we go from the classification to the image so there's our initial image um, and there's our classification at this stage. You can see that it is actually picking up a lot of the vegetation there. So the next step we'll clean this up a little bit. So this is, this is going in and having a look at the NDVI as well and seeing if some of the objects that have been picked up as tree crowns are potentially not. So we'll execute this one and this is relatively quick and you can see that some of those areas that were pulled up initially um, have been removed now and so we've got areas that are now green um, being classified as the vegetation. We've got a final cleanup to do here so we just run that. It tidies things up just a little bit. It's a bit difficult to see at this at the zoom level that it's at but this is our final classification of our tree crowns and we can look at it with the, um, with the individual uh, polygons turned on as well. And now what we do is just for the final step is we like to export that to to um, to a vector, to, so to a shapefile, and we'll export that to to ArcMap, and that just takes a couple of seconds, and basically we're done, and, and then we can open this up in ArcMap for further analysis.